What's good, Storm fans? Brian Cook here, and tonight we're playing my very favorite modern deck, Lotus Breach. In the card above, you can find my last video on the deck where I went 5 and 0, oh, recorded first time playing the list featuring Street Wraith that you can see here. Street Wraith is just a free cycler. Well, why is that good? Well, one, we play effects like Otherworldly Gaze, where we get to sculpt the top of our deck but not draw them immediately. It's not a cantrip. So Street Wraith hits those you know, cards quickly. We're also an Underworld Breach deck, so it fills our graveyard for Escape Fuel. It's pretty nice. So that was the first list debuting it, and in that league, I wasn't really using my entire sideboard. You'll notice that I wasn't getting the most out of Leyline of Sanctity. Leyline's really good against decks like Burn because it stops some damage. It's good against Jund, but Jund doesn't really see a whole lot of play. It's okay against Living End because it stops Endurance, but you have Pact to Negation anyway for that. I don't think that Leyline is actually that good against them. So I found myself not really using Leyline that often, wondering what could I play instead of Leyline. And I came to the conclusion that we need to return to Malevolent Hermit. It's not the first time that I've played this card in this archetype here on the channel. You can find a couple videos Previously, where I've uploaded this card. Actually, here's another uh, video for you to click on in the card above. So it wouldn't be the first time, but the nice thing about Malevolent Hermit is that you can mill it with a card like Consider that's actually from the same set in Estrada Midnight Hunt. Well, we've leveled up the deck since Midnight Hunt. Since the last time I played Malevolent Hermit, we've added in other really gaze, as I mentioned. I've never played these two cards together, but Malevolent Hermit being able to be, be disturbed. From the graveyard back into play to allow us to beat blue decks by essentially creating this blue defense grid for us is really nice so it allows our you know our mill effects to be card advantage and that's really interesting to me another thing it does is it allows you to beat chalice on one or zero without ever answering the card i think that's super interesting and that's why I'm playing it today. So the synergy with mill effects, beating Chalice of the Void, these are all things that I'm interested in. Otherwise, this deck list is the same exact one that I played in the video. If you're watching this deck for the first time, welcome. But uh, this might not be the best video for an introduction. I'll do a quick breakdown. If you already know how the deck works, feel free to skip ahead. So we are a Lotus Field deck. So this is a land that taps for three mana, sacrifice two lands. Once again, escape cost, that's actually a feature, not a bug. So we sacrifice two lands, and you use effects like Twiddle and Dream Script to be Blue Dark Rituals, which is pretty sweet. So we want Lotus Field, Blue Dark Rituals, got it. They're better than Desperate Ritual or Pyrotic Ritual here because they're only one mana and they make three. Okay, so we've got that down, and then we play Underworld Breach. And we can then twiddle again to untap our Lotus Field. And that's how this deck makes mana. We're really just twiddling Lotus Field over and over. Well, the cost at this point is cards in graveyard. How do we do that? We have effects like Tome Scour to mill five. So you create a loop where you cast Tome Scour twice and then twiddle once. You can do this over and over to mill yourself. And it's not an infinite loop. Just a heads up, you do run out of deck eventually. And each time you do this loop, you gain one card in Graveyard. So that gives you enough in the long term to cast Wish into a lethal Grape Shot. You might be wondering why Grape Shot and not Thass is Oracle. Well, it's a number of things. One, sometimes you don't have enough resources in the Graveyard, especially if you started on zero, to mill your entire deck into Thass's Oracle, which means that something like a Lightning Bolt could actually cause you to lose because you don't have enough resources, and that's kind of a bummer. The second thing is that Heliac Company doesn't really see play anymore, so you're not really that concerned with infinite life. Um, if that is a concern for you, my honest recommendation, and I don't mean this to be funny, get good. That deck is not very good against us. We're faster, we're more consistent, we're more disruptive. You can beat that deck without a crutch in your sideboard like Thassa's Oracle. And here's the real reason, in my opinion. Dress down. I do not want to lose the dress down when I could just play Grape Shot instead. So I am a big fan of Grape Shot. That's what I've got. All right. So and the way that this deck wins a majority of the time, I mentioned here's the, you know, the twiddle on your Lotus Field line or whatever. But Wish is a, I don't want to call it a one card combo because that's not accurate. But the idea behind Wish is you get 10 cards in your graveyard. And this is really where effects like Street Wraith and other worldly gates come into play. So you want 10 cards in your graveyard. And then if you have six mana, so you play your Lotus Field, you twiddle or Dream Script it twice, you can cast Wish. 
you get the cyborg copy of underworld breach you cast it now you have one mana floating you get load or you cast your twiddle twice using those uh cards in your graveyard escaping down to four you wish again escaping down to one leaving a twiddle in your graveyard so that is the one card that is left from there you can cast home scour out of your sideboard and now you've created the loop using burning or using wish i wish it was burning wish uh but using wish so you've used wish to get both underworld breach and home scour which is pretty sweet that's my deck tech i hope you enjoyed it i am looking to be a grumpy old man and put hermit into play in this video let's see if it happens and uh thanks for watching i do appreciate it i'll see you in the first round if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. You can also show your support by becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks such as badges, emotes, exclusive members-only content, and access to our members' Discord section. As you increase the tiers, there are other rewards such as shop discounts, cyborg guides, early access to videos, and even free donation decks. Click the join button down below to find out more. We also have other ways you can support us such as theepicsroom.com slash shop or submitting a donation deck via the epicstorm.com slash donation decks. That's enough for now. Let's play some magic. Welcome to the first match. We're on the draw against I Play Bad Decks, who's actually won a modern challenge with Twiddle Storm, another Lotus Field variant. Not the one we're playing tonight, but it is a Lotus Field variant. All right, it looks like they're on uh, Vengevine combo. Otherworldly Gaze is a good one. Let's uh, bobble ourselves. Twiddle. I am interested in drawing the Twiddle. So... I want to thin my deck a little bit. So let's cycle the Street Wraith and then fetch. I'm going to grab Watery Grave. Ouch. And then let's just be lazy and cast this now. I want both the Wish and the Twiddle. Okay, so I'm going to leave these on top. I can use the Wish Claw Talisman eventually to go get Lotus Field, and then the Wish represents the rest of the combo on its own. Pitcher Supplier, Creeping Chill. Okay, so maybe I shouldn't have been so liberal with my fetching, because I don't want to just die to Creeping Chills. Hmm, should I fetch? I think I'm going to. I want to thin my deck. Plus, I need 10 cards in Graveyard for the Wish combo anyway. All right, play Wish Claw. Pass the turn. So right now, next turn, assuming I don't draw exactly Lotus Field, each player discards a card. Island down. They have two cards. We'll take one. We're at 10. So if I don't draw Lotus Field and I just um, go search for it, I can only make five mana, which isn't enough to win, unless I draw another Twiddle here. So let's see what the draw step is. Inquisition, that's not good enough. All right, let's target them. Narc Amoeba and a Chill. Their hand isn't doing a whole lot. Let's cast Consider. We can mill that. All right, we have a win next turn now. Ooh, they have another Rotting Rats in the graveyard. I missed that. It's actually not good for me. Another Chill, so I'll go to seven. All right, so I'm taking two. I go to five. And they didn't use the Rotting Rats. So, oh no, hold on. Okay. Whew. I thought I accidentally F2'd through my turn. All right, so they didn't use the Rotting Rats in the graveyard, and I think I'm going to take advantage here. I think we just got the game because of it. We're going to pick up Lotus Field, tap this for a blue. Sacrifice these. Bobble. Let's untap. So here you get to see the one... Uh, it's not true to... It's not fair to call it a one-card combo, because it's not. But it's a one-card set up your engine maybe that's a fair way to describe it i'm not sure but it's really sort of what we're doing here so wish is going to get both underworld breach and the scour all right so we played the breach now we cast twiddle 
Okay. Yes. Put all again. Big graveyard here should be pretty easy. Now we can escape wish. From eight. Twiddle. I think we can actually just double grape shot here and don't even bother you with the tome scour. Yes. Bobble you. Oh, they conceded. Okay. They saw the writing on the wall. So we picked up game number one over this Vengevine variant. Hmm. I have a feeling that Pact isn't too good here, so I'm going to board that out for an Echoing Truth. Do I want to make any other changes? Could board in Void Snare in case they have something like Leyline of the Void? I have a feeling that Inquisition isn't amazing against the deck that wants all their stuff in the graveyard. I think I'm going to try this out. Game number two. All right, we're ready to start things off. And we've opened up a terrific hand. We will keep this. All right, no pregame effects from our opponent. They start off with a polluted delta for watery grave. Crab. All right, the merfolk thing again. The really gaze for the opponent. They have great taste. We're just going to play an untapped watery grave and pass the turn. Grab, sure. All right, so if they hit a Vengevine here, they can cast this Merfolk and then put the Vengevine into play. No Vengevine, but they did trigger an Archimeba. And now again, they get another trigger here with the Crab. Tries to Melgum. And another Narcomeba. That's actually a pretty strong turn for the opponent. Okay. So they will get back a prized amalgam this turn. No Vengevine. Strong start, for sure. Okay. So now they get to trigger these. I guess it's only one. But I'm going to cast other Worldly Gaze here. I don't need another copy of Lotus Field. I don't really need a Gaze or a Bobble. So we're just going to mill all three of those. I, I need to find a Twiddle. Misty... Hmm. I'm just going to pass for now. I could flash back another really gaze on the end step, which digs the deepest for Twiddle. So that's why I'm interested in that play. Grab. Sure thing, another Amalgam and another Narcomoeba. They still have a Gravecrawler and a Rotting Rats in the graveyard as well. Definitely a sweet deck. We'll take five here, going to 13. All right, so we're getting pretty close to facing lethal here. Flashback, no twiddles. We're at 12 and they have nine damage in play. Interesting that they did not bring back Rotting Rats or the Grave Crawler. Hmm. So I hit the the twiddle. I could go for it this turn. Blue, blue. Lotus field. All right, let's see if I'm allowed to untap the lotus field. That happened. Uh, undo. Need to tap for red. Underworld breach. And that resolved. Okay, Lotus Field. I'm trying to figure out why they wouldn't cast those cards out of their graveyard. Hmm. Let's cycle this and go to 10. Another Twiddle is good. Yes, I'd like to untap. Let's cast Consider. Um, let's mill that. Another twiddles, fine by me. Untap. So we can just play the wish claw here and that should get the job done. Okay. Activate the wish claw. Grab tome scour. Target me. 
A flashback otherworldly gate. Sure. And they have conceded the game. All right. Well, uh, I will take a match win. So we are one and all. Four rounds left. No hermits here. But let's see if maybe we can use it in match number two. With Card Hoarder, renting your favorite combo deck has never been easier. There isn't a more affordable solution for Magic Online. Want to play the deck in this video? Check out the pink comment below to easily rent the deck from Card Hoarder. Did you know you can rent the Epic Storm from Card Hoarder for as little as 7 tickets a week? We've made it simple to do so by including a button to rent the entire deck at theepicstorm.com slash decklist. Alright, match number 2, we're on the play. This one's really good, we just have to find the second land to keep. Let's go. Island past the turn. Cavern of Souls, okay. Beast. Uh, they're on uh, Amul Titan. Yep. I mean, we have a really good hand for this matchup. I just need to find the second land immediately. We pick up the cavern. Yep. Okay, let's cast this other whirly gaze. And it looks at pretty beautiful. Love it. Um Unfortunately I'm supposed to bin the twiddle here. It's better in the graveyard than it is in my deck. Right now we're pretty close to a turn three. That would have been a great spot to have a street wreath in my hand instead of the second claw. Okay, play Wishclaw past that turn. Alright, so they're starting the second turn with the Simic Growth Chamber. What can they do? Aim out of Vigor, floating your green. They have another copy of Simic Growth Chamber, okay. So now they have three mana. They can return a copy of Simic Growth Chamber, and they can play it a Dryad of the Elysian Grove, and then replay another Simic Growth Chamber, or even the Cavern of Souls. They decide to play the Cavern. There's only one downside to this matchup, in my opinion. We can't board in Hermit. I want to showcase Hermit. Kind of a bummer. I do like my Amulet matchup in general. I have lost it in the past. It can happen. But in general, I do feel favored. Inquisition. All right, so I can go blue, blue, play Lotus Field, twiddle it, leaving one blue floating, search for Breach. I think we've got it here. Let's go through the steps. All right, so twiddle. Be sure this works. I'm, I'm counting for attackers or some joke like that. I'm just going to go for it. I think we've got it. All right, activate. Grab Underworld Breach. Play the Breach. Dream Script to untap the Lotus Field. Okay, tap for three blue. Dream Script untap Lotus Field. And now we can cast Wish with a Twiddle still in the graveyard. So we Wish. Let's expand this carefully. Love how Magic Online UI does that to me. Let's cast the Tome Scour targeting me. All right, we have one floating. Now we cast Dream Script again. Exile three lands that don't matter. All right, now we cast the Tome Scour and we have the loop. We just have to keep going through it. Okay. Another wish. We cannot exile that wish. That is the last wish in our deck. Untap the Lotus Field. Scour. Target me. All right. So this is one of those games that I was telling you about during the deck tech where everyone just assumes that Thoracle always wins. But it doesn't. This is going to be a game where we're not likely going to be able to mill the final two cards in our deck. Because you'll notice we're at 22. And if you wanted to mill those, it costs a full escape. And you end up being short of being able to play Oracle. 
All right, cast Twiddle. From 13. Scour. Wraith, Wraith. Dream script. Scour again. From 15. Twiddle untap. Yes. All right, scour from 17. This will be our last scour. We'll remove Bobble, Ottawara, consider from 18. Cast the twiddle. Okay, yes. Twiddle. Okay, and now we escape the wish. Removing Scour and a couple other Twiddles. So you'll notice here, I don't have enough to escape again, and I don't have enough to clear my deck. So this is a spot where Grape Shot wins and Oracle doesn't, assuming your opponent has removal. Like a whole bunch. Okay. We did it. Sweet. We won game one on the play. Going to post board. I really like Pact Indigation here because it stops both Endurance and Force of Vigor. And I think Needle's also fine because it stops something like Relic of Regenitus, but it also stops Besage You. All right, so we need to find four cards to take out. I am not a big fan of Inquisition in this matchup. Yes, it can hit Amulet and it can hit Dryad, but I found in general, it's just not that great. I guess it hits uh, Endurance too. I could ward out Street Wraith and keep it. It's a lot better on the play than it is the draw. Maybe I'll try boarding out the Wraith here. This makes it so much faster to have Street Wraith though. All right, on the draw, I'm going to have Street Wraith. On the play, I would have Inquisition. I think I'm only going to do one Needle. Let's submit this. Really good hand. The only thing that this hand is lacking is a copy of Lotus Field, but we have other really gays to dig for it, and we have a Mishra's Bobble. I'm all in. This is definitely a key. Opponent shuffling down to five. All right, they've kept their five card hand. Everyone, her souls on elemental. Probably for endurance, and they have an amulet of vigor. Draw. All right, let's uh, start off with a fetch just to thin her deck and increase her probability of finding Lotus Field. Act of negation. Well, they have a Cavern of Souls, so I'm not really interested in that. Let's fetch. I mean, it's still fine if they're alt casting it, but I don't want to sit on that when I need to just find Lotus Field to start anyway. All right, we'll pass through their turn, and then in their upkeep with the Mishra's Bobble trigger on the stack, I will cast other Worldly Gaze. And the reason to not do it immediately is if our opponent for some reason decides to just use their cards, I want to wait until the last possible moment just to increase her odds just a little bit. I'm not interested in any of these, so we can ship all of them. Draw a random card off the bobble. Another copy of other really gays. So depends on what our opponent does here, but it's better on our next turn to use two mana for the flashback, because then on the following turn, we could use three mana and use both copies of other worldly gaze, the one in hand and the second copy in graveyard. They have three mana. They're playing a Grill Turf. They pick up the Cavern of Souls. In my upkeep, do I want to cast Gaze? I don't think so. I'm just going to take a draw. Needle. Not super helpful right now, but it's still fine for naming Besage you later. Let's pass the turn. Cavern of Souls is back, and once again, it names Elemental. The Endurance uh, signals are strong. 
let's flash back other really gays. Another twiddle effect. I just need Lotus Field, so we're going to mill all of those. Upkeep, let's uh, flash this back. Once again, looking for Lotus Field. There it is. I'm also going to keep this pack to negation on top. Draw the field. Play it. Pass the turn. Do they cast Endurance? No. Okay, they're being disciplined. Slayer Stronghold. So I could play the Breach here. They're signaling the Cavern really hard. Um, if they do that, what's the plan? So I can play Breach. Floating blue-blue. I can Dream Script going up to four. That doesn't really do anything. So I think what's going to happen here is I'm going to play Steven's tapped and pass. On their end step, I can tap the Cavernous Souls, untap the Lotus Field, play and flashback other really gays, untap and have Pact Negation is an option for um, the counter the Endurance. They still do not cast the Endurance. Another Cavern. This one name's Human. They're going through their combat. On their end step. We'll add some blue mana. And we're going to tap Rural Turf and untap Lotus Field. This actually does two things. One, it shuts them off Besage you, and it shuts them off Endurance. They don't even bother floating mana. Okay, I don't think there's any point to me casting other worldly gaze because if I cast this other worldly gaze, they can then mill, they can then endurance for the alternative for cast, and I don't have a graveyard this turn for underworld breach. So this card's more of an insurance policy than anything else. Okay, blue, red, underworld breach. They cast endurance pitching grazer. I will cast pact in a game. They have two cards. Underworld Breach and a Resolve. So, okay. So we can now untap the Lotus Field. Remove three cards. Okay, we'll cast another copy of Dream's Grip. Remove some more cards that don't really matter. Tap for Triple Red. Play Wish. This now gets Tome Scour and it's deterministic. Looks like we've done it. Firms eight. For what it's worth, some people get a little bit upset when your opponents don't concede when they're dead. I don't mind. Like if you want me to execute the combo, I love twiddling. It is absolutely fine. Uh, just a friendly reminder to be nice to your opponents if they want to see it played out. Okay. Storm is 11. Untap. From 12. Scour. Move Street Wraith and some other stuff. I don't know. Scour again. From 14. Now we need to Dream Script on Tap Lotus Field. It is always two scours plus one untap effect. Just an easy way to remember. Scour. Okay, so from 16. Whittle. From 17. Yes. Whittle again, so from 18. Cast Wish. I think our opponent's conceding. All right, so they waited until I had milled my deck. That's fine. We're 2-0. Pretty good. Three rounds left. 
Looking to make playing your favorite combo deck much easier? Look no further than the Epic Storm Mini Token Combo Pack, which is available at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $14.99. This combo token pack comes with 84 double-sided tokens. That includes our classic Storm and mana tokens as well as fan favorites such as goblins, squirrels, and slime time live. But that's not all. We've expanded this token pack to cover a variety of formats with new tokens. Stop on by the epicstorm.com slash shop and make an easy decision to elevate your combo game. All right, match number three. We're on the draw. I'm going to keep this hand. It's effectively a mulligan to six due to double Lotus Field, but as a six card hand, this hand would still be amazing, so I'm going to try it out. I don't know what this card even does. Whoops. Oh, that was almost bad. I almost skipped through my turn. Trying to zoom in on this card. Whenever Unlucky Witness dies, exile the top two cards of your library. You may play those until your next end step. Okay. Let's not skip my turn. That would be bad. They will attack with Unlucky Witness. I have no clue what's, what our opponent's playing. Goblin Bombardment. So they're on like the Zombies deck in Modern. That's pretty sweet. Hard to be upset about that. So we will fetch, go to 18, and I will cast this Otherworldly Gaze. I mean, these are all cards I want, so... Let's put those like that. Draw. Ouch. Wishclaw Talisman. Pass the turn. I believe we have a win wrapped up here because my top card is Twiddle. We have Tome Scour, and I can go get Underworld Breach with the Wish Claw. Unlucky Witness will get in. We'll go to 15. They're going to sacrifice the Unlucky Witness to exile the top two. What were they? Land and Grief. I don't know how much this matters. So they can play the Grief. I guess if I have to escape Scour, that might matter. I don't think it does, but I could be wrong. They wisely take the Scour. They can sacrifice the Grief to deal another damage with the Goblin Bombardment. I'm at 13. Okay. She's in Pyromancer, you've got it. Discards Fury in a land. All right, so I'll draw. We have the Twiddle. So, blue, blue, play Lotus Field. I just need to visualize it, I guess. So if I Twiddle here, tap for three, I think I'm short. If I play Breach, so I play Breach, Floating in Blue. Let's say I exile Tarn and these two. And I can untap the Lotus Field. And then I can cast Scour, removing Otherworldly Gaze, Consider, Twiddle. But I'd have to hit. Yeah, this just like isn't a good plan. Um, let's just flash back the Otherworldly Gaze. We will leave Breach on top. Okay. All right, so now the game plan is for our opponent not to kill us. So they'll attack for three. I go to ten. Okay, they play Rebirth on the Season Pyromancer. Village Rights. That's a sweet interaction with the Season Pyromancer. Into a Bloodgast. All right, I believe we have it wrapped up. Blue, cast Twiddle. I'm not even going to play the Scalding turn because I don't want to activate it and lose a life. Underworld Breach. Okay. Yes. Activate. Let's just go grab another Twiddle because I can. Untap. 
And we'll scour ourselves. Wishclaw, consider... Whittle? Should I just fetch? I mean, the most they can deal me is three with the bombardment. It's fine. All right, scour targeting me. And now we're just going through the motions. Scour. Scour. Term is seven. Scour. Term eight. Let's cast a twiddle here. Leave myself a little bit of wiggle room in case I misclick or something. And our opponents can see to the game. All right, sweet. So we've gotten game number one over this red-black sacrifice deck. Out of board. Well, I, I don't think I need this pact negation, so let's get rid of that. I think we're likely to want the bounce spells. Maybe shave on an inquisition. Actually, I'm going to go down to two Inquisition and board in one Needle. Give myself the ability to shut down multiple, like, Nile Spell Bombs or something like that. Game two, we've opened up a No Lander. We're going to Mulligan. A little bit clunky. Uh, I guess we keep this. I don't love it. That said, we are facing a black deck with Grief and uh, Undying Effect, so I don't really want to Mulligan to five. Another land. Pass the turn. Land two. Gothy Voidwalker. I don't love that. Let's keep the Wish Claw. Draw. My deck list admittedly doesn't have a lot of answers to Dothy. It's not a super popular card anymore. In older lists, I played things like Fatal Push just to kill Dothy. Obviously, it's good against Hammer Time 2 and Burn, but I'm not playing it in this list, so answering Dothy is a little bit more of a challenge. So they're going to attack for 3, I'll go to 15. Goblin Bombardment. Ragavan. Yeah. I'm at 15 and they have 5 power, so the clock is ticking. That's a Breach. I don't believe I have any answers on the sideboard. I mean, I guess I could build up to five lands, go wish in a grave shot. Seems like a long ways away. Okay, I'm at 10. Triggers. Whittle. Four black. Great grief. Hmm. All right, I'm going to pick it up. I'm, I'm going to switch my plan. I'm going to bring Inquisition back in because of the Dothies. Let's get rid of the needle. 61 cards. Let's take out a Consider. It's a little bit low impact. But I think I just want all the good stuff. So we're going to try this out. On the play for game three. I think this hand's a trap. It just doesn't do the thing. I guess we have an answer to Dothi. All right, I've, I've talked myself into it. Misty passed the turn. Black Leaf Cliffs. Uh oh. I have a feeling they have the uh, the rebirth in hand. This is not going to be good for me. See if I can find Lotus Field here. Nope. The opponent looking at her hand with grief. They've discarded wish and now the rebirth. Oh no, it's village rights. Okay. Sure. They have six cards in hand. And uh, I'm not doing a whole lot here. Things are not looking good for the home team. Land two. They're at 18. There's a Dothy. I mean, I have a couple answers to it in hand already, but it is just another thing that slows me down while beating me down. Draw. All right, let's cycle. 
Red 16 bobble. Target myself. Another street wreath. I'm going to fetch that away. Grab the sea vents. Pass the turn. We found Wish. So I'll go to 12. They have land three. Mayhem Devil. Yeah, I mean, the clock's uh, coming, that's for sure. Hmm. I'm going to take a draw. Another twiddle. I need to find Lotus Field. Like, I have a win wrapped up as long as I can find the field, but I'm just so... I have nothing to search for it. I'm almost dead. They have six power in play, and I'm at 12. And with Lotus Field, I have to deal myself damage because of the Mayhem Devil. It's whenever a player sacrifices a permanent, not you. So I'm going to go to six here. They have five cards still in hand. Three. Three Season Pyromancer. Discards another Voidwalker and Unlucky Witness. Ah, uh, they had another Grief. I think I'm just dead. This is certainly one matchup where uh, not having Leyline hurts. I think the play is pretty obvious that it's just Wish here. The opponent agrees. And I go to five. I do not have an out. Draw. Wouldn't have worked anyway. So I, I had to draw exactly Lotus Field this turn in order to win. Wish Call wouldn't have been good enough. All right, so we are now two and one. If you're still watching, make sure to give this video a like, comment, and subscribe. While you're near the description, here's a reminder to use our affiliate links if you're going to make a purchase from Amazon, Card Hoarder, or TCG Player. Just above those affiliate links, you'll find our social channels. Make sure to join those to connect with us. Let's bounce back after that tough loss. We have a pretty solid hand here. We have turn one interaction with Bobble and Inquisition. We have uh, the Wishclaw Talisman to go get Lotus Field, double twiddles. So we're really looking to draw like a Wish or an Underworld Breach. I mean, I wouldn't say no to a Lotus Field. One sub teeth. Great Temple Garden. What are you playing? Commune with Spirits. This is probably Enchantress. They reveal windswept teeth. Okay, another Inquisition isn't the worst here. Let's look at their top card. Enchantress's Presence. Called it. Go get Watery Grave. And Inquisition them. Let's take the... Whatever. Sith? Siths? I don't know what this is called. Scythes? Words are tough. Pass the turn. Treat Wraith, okay. This matchup's uh, kind of brutal because they often play a bunch of main deck Blood Moon effects. That's pretty much the only way that I lose this matchup is Blood Moon. Hello, Lotus Field. Welcome to the party. Thanks for stopping by. Go grab a basic. Play Wish Claw. Pass the turn. Utopia Sprawl, okay. They choose white, and they play another Sterling Grove. Draw. That should do it. Let's cycle. All right, play Lotus Field. Sacrifice these two. Whittle. Yes. Tap for blue. Whittle. Yes. Play a Wish Claw. Have this for red. Activate Wish Claw. We go get Underworld Breach. Play the Breach. Put all the Lotus Field. And then we use the other Wish Claw to go get Tome Scour, and it's a good game. Okay. From six. Activate the Claw. 
Go get Scour. Storm 7. All right, Storm 8, we'll Scour again. And now we've uh, allowed ourselves to go down to one mana, so we have to untap the Lotus Field. From 10. Let's Dream Script again. Let's just get some more mana floating. Lotus Field, Street Wraith, Street Wraith. Tap for blue, Scour. Pop that graveyard out. Remove the Flooded Strain, consider Twiddle. We're going to leave the Wish in the graveyard because we need those in order to win the game. So it makes sense. Just keep scouring. All right, we're back down to one blue, so we'll cast some untap effects. From 16. We're at the point now where I can just end the game. I don't need to mill the rest of it. Okay. Now we'll cast Wish. Grab Grape Shot and target them. Click, 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 boom. All right, so now we have to get a post board game against Enchantress, the Blood Moon deck. Okay. We can get this Pact Negation out of here. And then we want Echoing Truth and Avoid Snare. You could board in Hermit here. I don't know if you're supposed to. Another question is, what do you board out for the other bounce spell? Let's shave a consider. Click Submit. Feels pretty bad losing to the red-black uh, mid-range deck after cutting my Leyland of Sanctities. We also haven't used Hermit this league, but we haven't faced a blue deck, which isn't normal. Sure, I'll keep this. We're essentially just a twiddle away. Misty Rainforest and pass. Bobble. Target them. Basic Forest. Wish is sort of a clunky draw here. In fact, I'd argue most of our hand is pretty clunky. We need to find some Twiddles. Rest in Peace, Solitary Confinement. Let's take the Rest in Peace. Pass the turn. Another pretty good enchantment against us, that Rest in Peace. All right, so we found one Twiddle. That's a good start. Not going to complain about that. They played their legendary creature. All right, so now we have a turn three wrapped up as long as we can fade an enchantment that's bad for us. Wishclaw Talisman. Pass the turn. Prismatic Vista. Do you have it? All right, we've got it. Okay, draw. Blue, blue. Activate. A little bit of lag tonight. Maybe I need to restart my computer or something. Play the Lotus Field. Sacrifice. Twiddle. Yes. Twiddle. Yes. Underworld Breach. Twiddle. Yes. Tap for blue, play the wish, expand, show them Tome Scour. Twiddle. A couple of turn threes, not going to be upset about that. Turn threes with interaction too. We got to Inquisition them and then went on turn three. Pretty strong. Scour. Okay, let's untap. Yes. Scour again. Remove Underworld Breach. Okay, Storm is 12. We will twiddle to untap. I know this part's like a little bit boring as the viewer, but I don't know. I got to narrate this or else it just like cuts to the end. And honestly, 
like if you're not willing to do this part the deck's probably not for you because it is a little a little uh like monotonous to play through sometimes like i don't mind doing it but it's just like not very exciting for you because i'm just like clicking the same stuff over and over from 15. Whittle. I believe we're at the point where I can end the game. It's 16, 17. Let's remove the extra scour, I guess. Yes. Wish will be 18, Group Shot will be 19. Okay. Cast Grape Shot targeting you. That'll do, Pig. That'll do. And if they had played the Solitary Confinement, I have a, or had a Void Snare in the graveyard that I removed. So Void Snare could have answered the Confinement first, and then we could have won anyway. So we had an answer to the card they did have. Three and one, one match left. Let's get it. Want early access to articles at theepicstorm.com? Become a member of our Patreon to get articles 7 days early, on top of other sweet benefits, and help us pay our website team. You can sign up at patreon.com slash theepicstorm. Alright, the fifth and final match versus a supporter of this channel, ShoeTech, who's lent me endurances for videos before, so let's see if they're playing an endurance deck. We have a pretty strong 7 here, we will keep. Blooded Strand, pass the turn. Don't want to give them any information up front that we don't need to. Okay, so this is probably Yawgmoth. All right. Ouch. Other really Gaze. Don't want any of this. Draw. A Bobble. Let's target ourselves and then see if we want the card or not. Definitely want that, so let's cycle. Fetch, search out a steam vents. That way I don't have to tap the Lotus Field for red later. If I can draw a twiddle for a turn, I believe we have a win. Okay, I shouldn't say that. We don't have guaranteed scour, but we have an otherworldly gaze, which digs pretty deep. Bobble. We found Twiddle. That's a good sign. Vernon Catacombs. Wall of Roots. This is definitely a matchup where Leyline is decent, too, because they have Endurance, but they also have Thought Seize and sometimes even Necromancia. Draw. But well, we're definitely going for it now. Let's cycle this three rate, see if we, what we can hit. Another useless land. All right, so we're going to tap that for red. Okay. Whittle. Yes. Tap for blue. Activate. Get Underworld Breach, and let's cast it. So that resolved. Untap the Lotus Field. Let's escape the other worldly gaze. So we have a non-deterministic loop right now. And the fact that we can essentially remove one card at a time to dig for Tome Scour. Does the Wish Claw do it? It might. Alright, so. I believe it does actually work. Yes. Okay, remove some bobbles. A lot of turn threes in this video. Just an observation. Butch Claw Talisman. Remove Street Wraith, Inquisition, and Otherworldly Gaze. Activate. Go get Scour. Cast the Scour. Okay, so I will cast Scour again, targeting me. And our opponent concedes, and we're off to game number two. 
versus Yawgmoth. Once again, this is a matchup where we really wanted Leyline. Like, I haven't actually gotten paired against Yawgmoth in a while. But we want packs for the Endurance, but they have Thoughtseize and even Necromancer, which is pretty scary. So I guess this is a real test to see how much I need those Ley Lines. Do I want Void Snare or Echoing Truth? Um, I'm not so sure. Bring in Echoing Truth, I guess. We'll leave Void Snare. But I think I'd prefer the speed of Street Wraith over the consistency of Consider. This is a pretty fast matchup. Game three. Very good hand. We will keep. All right, turn one Yavamaya into Ignoble Hierarch. Draw. Quiddle's a decent one. Pass the turn. Overgrown Tomb. Young Wolf. Geist, okay. Brings for three, we'll fall to 17. Sometimes our opponent's deck is a Magus deck, which is part of the reason that they, they run Ignoble for a few reasons, but the fact that it makes red can sometimes mean Magus. So I'm going to prep for that by getting uh, the basic island. Okay, I want both of these. So I'm going to leave them both on top. Draw. Cycle the Street Wraith. And I will fetch for a Black Source. Let's me to 11. Wish Claw. Pass the turn. So if I could draw Underworld Breach, Wish, or the Singleton Tome Scour, we have a turn 3 with backup. Dryad Arbor. They swing. We'll take 3 down to 8 life. Draw another wish claw. Does that do it? That is an interesting question. Okay, so we can cast Breach with one floating, and I can escape twice. I think that does do it. I guess I'll find out. Honestly, this isn't a joke. It is good for me if our opponent casts into. <clears throat> If they cast Endurance. Excuse me. Um, so, so we'll tap for red. Because it's another card to the graveyard. Grab Breach. I didn't even consider Wish Claw Talisman as a possible out there. Cast Pact Negation. That should do it. Whittle. Yes. Quiddle again, Wraith, Misty, Pact. If the Pact isn't there, did it ever really happen? Yes. Except for triple black. The lag is real, come on. And Scour. Okay, so at this point we're just going through the motions. Our opponent just said, good games, good games. We did it. We got the 4-1 with the only loss being to red-black. We unfortunately never got to use Maleficent Hermit, which is kind of a bummer. The rest of the list performed very well. Let me know in the comment section down below if you think I should switch back to Leywine of Sanctity or if I should try Hermit some more. I'd be interested to know your feedback. Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. And as always, keep storming. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.